All right, let's pop the chat out here. We are live streaming, and uh, thanks for stopping by, guys. Let me make sure I can see the uh, chat up here at the top and make sure the sound is down. Hey, Tom R., thanks for stopping by. Let me uh, get this fixed here one second. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure I didn't step on the uh, four dummies chose when they were closing their show out. Thanks uh, for stopping by Santa Cruz as well. And um, yeah, it was a good show. And uh, just a reminder, um, I don't know Lloyd personally, but uh, I I'd hate to have to be in his shoes. So if you uh, get a chance, I don't get super chats or uh, I don't have anybody donating through, you know, Patreon or anything like that yet. But uh, if you're interested, uh, just, just for now, Go ahead and donate to uh, Lloyd to help him out on his fire issue. Uh, it's uh, L-F-I-N-K, that's lfink27 at gmail.com. I'm sure he appreciates some help uh, from you guys through PayPal. Um, he seems like a good guy. The only couple times I've, I've been able to watch a show, and uh, I wish him the best either way. Hopefully, he'll be doing, doing some more reviews here before long and uh, be back on his feet. That's uh, I, I know a lot of people were really generous during the Ford Dummy show, and uh, hopefully they're the ones like Test Dummies, and they're the guys who've been uh, spreading the word. So I'm sure that uh, he'll be all right in the long run. We're a, a big family, so I appreciate uh, all the help I've already been getting through uh, shares on Twitter, and uh, I need to keep up more with my Facebook account. And um, but I do a lot of distiller.com and uh, YouTube, of course. So I always appreciate the likes, the subscribes, the shares, all that. It's uh, very helpful. So anyway, uh, you're probably wondering what in the world is Telex wearing? Well, my uh, mom, <laughs> I don't think she's here tonight. Uh, she likes to mess with me sometimes. And uh, to make a long story short, I'm originally from Louisville, Kentucky, and we're big on basketball. I grew up a Cardinals fan, Louisville Cardinals. And when I moved away, um, I felt like, you know, I don't get a chance to watch a lot of the games. They don't even show them half the time. So I'll, you know, watch both of them. I like UK and uh, Uville right now. Uh, unfortunately, Louisville, as you probably already know, if you are a basketball fan, you've noticed they've had some uh, hard times lately <laughs> because of their program. And uh, Coach Patino is gone and all that. They got Coach Paget now, which I think is going to turn the boat around. But they're not in tournament this year. So uh, I've been following UK. My mom was like, well, I'm going to get you a, a shirt. You got to promise to wear it. And I'm like, well, as long as it's not vulgar and, you know, completely uh, ridiculously demeaning, I guess I promise. So she sent it to me. I got it today. And uh, so here you go, mom. Hope you're happy. <laughs> as ridiculous that is. But we're here for the whiskey. We're not here for, for sports. So let's get to the whiskey. Oh my, this is a good one. The funny thing is on whiskey and scotch uh, specifically, I've always dove into the deep end of the pool. When I first had scotch, my first was a, an Isla. It was a smoke kid uh, blend. Very good right off the bat, loved it, fell in love with Isla, went to Ardbeg, Lagavulin, Lafroig, happily ever after. And after a while, you know, you hear things about sherry bombs and, and sherry this and you know, then you had the lowlands and the light stuff and the highlands. and But uh, sherry's were kind of intriguing. I never really had it, never drank sherry by itself. So I didn't know my PX, you know, Pedro Jimenez for uh, Mr. Paul out there. Uh, from that, from an Oloroso to uh, an Aloroso, and there's so many different types. There's Fino sherry. Um, it's crazy. But... Um, the first one I ever tried was this bad boy right here. It was a sherry bomb called Abuna. Abuna is how I believe how you pronounce it. Um, Abuna, Abuna, something like that. And um, it's matured completely in Spanish Oloroso sherry butts, which is interesting. Because I've had some um, whiskey that was primarily, you know, in a... Uh, Oloroso cask or, or even a sherry butt, but it didn't have this kind of flavor. I'm not sure what what else they do with this to get it as strong as it is, other than it being probably some sort of cask uh, strength deal. I mean, 61.1, you would think that's cask strength. I know that high ABV, as Hoagie reminded me, is not always you know cask strength, which is a good point, but I think this would be bottled straight from the cask at 61.1, so... Anyway, non-chill filtered, great. 
not doesn't say anything about coloring i don't think but um uh, i mean it's sherry it's got to be dark uh age statement no but uh batch 58 which tells me a lot actually uh the first one i had was batch 57 and i think the newer ones are in the 60s even 70s now uh i was looking to pick up this recently at batch 58 so uh you know that will be uh and I'll catch up with the comments later, guys. Sorry about the not being able to watch them as I go here. I'm, I'm kind of far from the keyboard to be able to top type. But a 58 uh, is what we got. 57 was the last one I had, and that was great. That was probably the best batch I've ever had. I think I had a 63 as well, and it, it wasn't that great. It was okay. It was it was decent. You know, three and a half stars. The first one was like four and a half stars, five stars. It was it was really really good. This one I give like four four and a half. Uh, we'll get into the the notes here, uh, and I see why they call it a sherry bomb because as soon as you go in for a, a, a nose, this is neat by the way. I haven't touched it. I just poured it right before the show went on, so it's been sitting out for a little bit. And you really get a nice Christmas fruit cake, really nice ginger. The nutmeg, of course, the fruits galore, like a dark fruit salad, not a light fruit salad, but a dark fruit salad. Ficky goodness, molasses, gingerbread cookies, all that. And it, makes, it makes, instantly makes you think Christmas time. And we just got eight inches of snow uh, the last couple of days. So this is like the perfect dram to, uh, for me tonight. I'm not sure where you are if it's uh, cold, but uh, it's been cold as hell here. So this will be right up my alley. And it's a really nice, Medium to heavy uh, mouth coat. The viscosity is really nice. It sticks up up top when you uh, you know give it a little wave. You don't have to swirl it. I know some people look down on the whole swirl thing, but uh, got to get some molecules flowing a little bit. Get that sucker around your glass. Take a look at the ring. Then it just stays there. I mean, there's no drops at all. It's, that's how you know how too much uh, thickness is going on there. Really nice. And, uh, you know, it's 61.1, so it's going to be really, really hot and neat. Uh, I don't advise it, but, you know, I like it neat. <laughs> if you're not in the sherry bombs, don't go there. But it's it's to me, it's it's great. Just a little dime size sip. And um, it'll, it'll make its presence known. I mean, it, but the... I mean, alcohol is there, of course, because it's so hot, but it's not an overpowering one to me as far as, you know, taste-wise. To me, the taste is very well balanced. Very good sweet, dark fruit blend uh, of, of, of flavor that really makes it um, easy to drink. So, But it is more enjoyable with a couple drops, I will say that. I wouldn't obliterate it, but I would definitely give it, you know, a couple drops just to let it simmer. Maybe like a one teaspoon to a good pour. I might have to pour a little more, but I'm going to wait till the next spot after the next dram. Then we might pour a little more of that. It's really good. It's one of my favorites. Uh, batch number, Louise, is uh, 58 on this guy. The 57, which is the one before this one, I thought was really, really good because the finish had a lot of clove cigarettes. I uh, really like a really good clove uh, cigarette finish. This one has a great finish, but it's a little more, a little more chalky. <clears throat> um, more fruit, though, which is nice. Um, I don't know. It's definitely better than the 67, I think, is the other one I had, which was not all that great. Um, so I'd try to stay in there the fifties. Fifties is a good, a good one. If you could find it, I'm not sure if anybody knows what the, the recent, uh, number on batches for the Abelar Abana, it, let me know what the, uh, I think they're in this, at least the seventies, if not the eighties or even higher than that by now, going up to the comments just to say uh, hi to some people and uh, catch up. Hey, Bobby, good to see you. Thanks for joining me, Moose. Hey, very cool. Hey, Mark Broda. Thanks for stopping by, man. <laughs> You are the, uh, you are something else. <laughs> Tell us, uh, Sean, I called him the uh, master of the poor. If you're the Scotch whore, he's the master of the poor. <laughs> anyway, got to think of something for Drew and Andrew next. Um, triple cap, thanks. 
Bonsoir, monsieur. Comment allez-vous? Um, let's see, we got Santa Richie Z. Thanks for stopping by. You guys did have a great show, by the way, uh, Mark, as usual. And uh, let's see, Brent Murphy, thanks. Our big and no. Um, that's uh, his favorite, I guess, our big offering. Uh, Richie Z asks, what's everyone's telex show dram? Hmm. Oh, he just poured it the Colony 14. Good choice, Bobby. That's a good one. Richie's drinking in Link 19. That sounds good and independent. Richie, is that a good one? That that 19? Let us know how you what you think about that one. Um looking uh, down the comments I'm still here, just catching up. Tony Johnson, thanks for stopping by in Ontario. We've been let's see, we have a strong Patrick Aged and Jameson Cast is red ale, very good. I'm not quite sure what you mean there, Tony. Um Let me know what you mean by that. Uh, as I guess Bo Strong Patrick is some sort of, uh, is that an Irish whiskey? Oh, no, it sounds like a beer in some sort of Jameson whiskey cask. Interesting. I know they have a stout and I know they have a, um, a new IPA. I haven't tried any of them. I haven't gotten to any Irish whiskeys. I, I stick to Scotland pretty much. Uh, maybe Japanese, I might take a little, you know, venture, but my whiskeys usually don't have any ease in them. We'll put them that, we'll put it that way. Um, probably Parnell, uh, let's see, Richie says he's only had the, the Gordon McPhail's Linkwood 15 and now the Alexander Murray Linkwood 19 and love the 15. Huh. Do you like the, uh, do you like the 19 as much, uh, Richie, or do you, uh, think the 15 is better? I'm curious of your, uh, what you think between the uh, GNM uh, Linkwood versus the Alexander Murray on the second or third dram of the bank local barley? Oh, nice triple cap! Uh, I'm assuming that's a ten year old. When the sixteen was out, man, I was I was at the very tail end when that was a really hot dram, and I wish I had more chances to, to you know get my hands on it, but it slipped in my fingers. I'm, I'm still looking for a local barley. I think I had eleven, a ten, and a sixteen of. From what I've seen, they're all probably pretty good, I'm sure. Uh, Bobby Purnell just poured a 19 first time. Let's see, oh, hey, Chris, uh, everyone, thanks for stopping by, man. Hey, Lee, good to see you. Uh, I'm about to do your uh, the, after the uh, Abala Rabbanah, I'm gonna do your uh, very generous uh, sample of the uh, Compass Box Peat Monster Cast Strength at 57.3. Man, that is glorious, that is nice. I didn't know how rare that was. I really, really appreciate that uh the scotch for dummies was talking about that even the guys at the compass box distillery themselves uh were surprised they actually had the bottle of the same stuff that you got they got it from tom r there and uh so you guys are very generous to let us uh you know have a, a sample and and uh, experience the same kind of juice it's uh, unreal that no name was fantastic as well uh, let's go uh tom r says i've tried some long road tonight and i was not impressed for the price there are better peated scotches for the price. You know what? When, when I'll, I'll do a little teaser for my next episode. Uh, I, got, I pulled out, got this today actually from um, the people up at um, one of my favorite places here in Maryland. It's a Hazelburn uh, Barolo nine year cask, uh, Barolo, uh, sorry, Barolo cask matured nine year. Uh, and this is a non peated version. Uh, from uh, Spring Bank. This is going to be interesting. It's my first hazel burn. I never had a Barolo. Um, I know it's a good North Italian wine, but uh, never tried it, so it should be a good one for later. I think we'll do that on the. Uh, I think we'll do that in the next show probably. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do that probably along with uh, Prene's uh, Spring Bank 24 Sherry Cask one. That's going to be excellent. I can tell already. <laughs> um, let's get back here. Luis says over where I'm at, all I see is batch 59. Interesting. Yeah, that's a couple. That's one down away from this one and two away from the one I really, really like. But I think you'd be happy with it. What would you think of the 59 if you did pick it up? I'm just curious. Um, Richie says smells wonderful and tasting. No, so, okay, on the Linkwood. 
Yeah, for 19 years, man, you'd think it'd be pretty good. Uh, everyone asks, did you see my post that Riverside had more block for 149? Um, I saw a post that you had. Yes, I did see that. I did scope them out where they were, and it looks like I could probably get there pretty easily from the Foggy Bottom Metro. Uh, it's just a matter of getting time to get there during lunch. It's kind of tricky because it's not close to where I work, so it's kind of a, it's a six stopper, so that might be a little far uh to get away with but um i might maybe if i got extra time sometime have to stop in there and see what they got those prices were pretty good and they had a good selection from what you showed me that's in dc too which uh, is always cool uh moose uh, asks uh, tom what's your pick for pete right now and i don't think he's uh oh he says like the 16 is amazing so is the 12 and tom Lar is right uh, that's a really good nicely blended earth pd you know, if you want like some really strong peat, like Lafroy or Octomore or something like that, it's different. But if you want a good um, mix and meld, um, like the 16, I agree, or the 12, even you, you really can't go wrong with that. Those are awesome. The uh, Potomac, uh, everyone says Potomac had Spring Break 11 for 189. Wow. Yeah, that's a little pricey for an 11, but I've heard it's absolutely worth it. <laughs> so I might have to save up for that one. Uh, Richie says the 19 is castering 53.8 doesn't drink like it it's sherry and I'm loving it so far cool yeah Alexander Murray I think is uh, gonna end up being an over um, overall a good independent bottler that's uh, consistently good unlike the berries I haven't been into the berries that I've had sometimes and the Battle Hill has been kind of a interesting um, experience uh cwc or exclusive malts have always been good uh gourmet McPhil's, i haven't really tried enough to really make a determination yet but i think they're going to be pretty good from what i've heard uh no problem lee says but it's pretty good stuff it really shows just how good the regular peat monster is that's what i've heard it, it didn't i'm surprised it didn't get as strong marks as the regular peat monster which i don't understand how that's possible if it's cast strength but i guess some people don't like to play around with the water and fine tune it like you know it's kind of like someone that just wants to pick up a, a guitar and play it versus someone that wants to get a guitar and modify it to make it perfect for what they're looking for i could see you know the the comparison to that with the same thing with doing a cast strength whiskey versus you know just something out of the gate that's already ready to go but I kind of like to play around with it. like the, the spring bank 12 cast strength is a really fun whiskey to play around with to, to get that perfect spot a lot a lot of our bags are like that too in my opinion but let's see um pernell says uk starting to assert itself a bit now good i'd like to go big blue hopefully they'll keep it up um he has luis says he hasn't picked up the ebony yet but it's on his list for sure that's um yeah, that's, I would. If you like sherry whiskey at all, it's definitely one of the stronger ones. It's full of flavor. I like huge, heavy, assertive flavors, and this is one of them. You can't go wrong. With a couple of drops, uh, it's gorgeous, and it, and it just this taste is just perfect. And, and as Scotch uh, test dummy, Scott from Scotch test dummies, they'll, they'll agree with me on this one. It's 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 a beautiful dram. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> very good let's see triple cap says this bottle is 10 years at 657.3 i had the 11 in campbelltown in august 10 is a little better perhaps wow interesting the 10 is better than the 11 is the uh, hey triple is the 11 a cast strength at like 57.3 as well or is it a lower abv maybe that's the difference i'm just curious Moose has had the 16, huh, and 8, but never ran across the 12. Always talking about the Lagavulin. Yeah, 12, you have to look for a more specialty store to find the 12 usually uh, sitting out there. And it's a good 120 to 140 everywhere I've looked. 120 on the cheaper end, 140 on the higher end. Uh, here in Maryland and D.C., Virginia at least. Um. Everyone says it was a local barley expression special edition. Huh. Must be, a, I think it's probably a newer run. Uh, after they ran out of the 16, they probably decided to make a, a quick uh, deal of the 10. So I'll have to try to get my hands on it somehow. Hopefully I'll get lucky. Tom says he's tried to Octomore 8 for the first time tonight, and it was magical. 
I've had the 7.1 and loved it. I've had the 7.3 and hated it. Uh, not a fan of the cast they used, the Rubiera del Duro. Um, but uh, the 8.1, I'd like to try. I bet that's amazing. Um, triple cap. Interesting. I have a bottle of burn. 13. Oloroso haven't opened it yet. Ooh, that sounds good. That does sound good. I think it's a hazel burn. Uh, 13. Oloroso he's talking about. I bet that's magical, my friend. I would love to taste that. <laughs> Lisa says, picked up an old Pulteney 21 and a Lafroy batch six cast strength today. Ooh, good find on the old Pulteney 21 as well as the, I mean, cast strength, you can't go wrong with Lafroy. Um, old Pulteney 21, I don't think you'll be disappointed at all. I think you'll be in heaven. It's a hard to find bottle uh, typically. In Maryland, they don't sell a whole lot of it, so it's easier to find here for some reason, but uh, a lot of other places, it's not easy to find. I've heard Baltimore's demanding dream. You have to be uh, ready at triple cap. Yeah, yeah, he's right about that. Lee says he recently drank the Big Pete Christmas edition. Oh, that's right. You get that special, you get these special editions, but I don't know how you find this stuff. But uh, great cast strength, Peter Dram. You can drink it without water. Great stuff. Wow. And it's cast strength, too. That's It, it must be uh, some sort of, um, what's the sherry? Is it a PX sherry they use with the Lee, or is it a Oloroso? Or there's got to be something that's that's blending it to, to make that much power taste good, you know? I would guess. Hey, Welsh, thanks so much for stopping by, my friend. This is the uh, – he's been enjoying the 59 recently. Got a great chocolate theme. Huh. This is the 58. One, just one behind you, and I've had the 57. I have not had the 59. 57 was clove cigarettes galore. I loved it. Uh, 58 is, is like really good fruit galore, I have to say. A really nice balance of dark fruit cocktail. Uh, just – and the cinnamon and the nutmeg and all the spice is, is still, you know, raging with the finish. So, I mean, I'm not disappointed. I think I still have a soft spot for the 57 probably because it's my my first one. But I love the close cigarette finish one. It's, it's outstanding. I had to try to find a 59 and get that chocolate theme. Dark chocolate probably, I'm assuming. Chris says he's not impressed with the Avenal. He prefers Glen Farkless and Glendronic just some expressions. Yeah, I can understand that. Uh, this one, I think, has, I think it would be heavy tannins in it. That might be the turn certain people off. I know Sean from Scotch 4 Dummies talked about he always got a like a headache after drinking it. And I, I assume that's probably because of tannins similar to like red wine drinking. If you drink a lot of red wine, some people get really bad headaches from it. But uh I haven't had a problem with this one. I'd usually do put a little bit of water on it, but um, I don't think the tannins bother me, thankfully, as much as like if I drank um, a lot of like real heavy hops stuff, though, like hoppy beer. Oh, that, that's what gives me a headache. I don't like it, but uh, I'm down with any. I never got a hangover from scotch, actually. Um, the uh, sherry the or peat, it's scotch. Never have a problem with it. It's interesting, but it's good. <laughs> Probably be able to drink as much if I did. <laughs> the wheels are going to come off. Oh, my. Oh. Uh, Triple Cap says, I've had a, have a picture of the 10 that was 53.1. I don't think the percentage is the difference, but who knows? Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's close enough to not be a big of a difference. So it must be just, um, even though it's a year older, maybe that's the deal. Sometimes younger versions, like heavier peat, you know, the younger stuff, like a lot of only eight. Some people like it more than the 16 because they want that that punchier. Maybe you like that local barley taste more and you get a little bit more of it with the 10 versus the 11. That's a guess, but that's what I'm going to guess at. I mean, I have a pick of the 11 at 53.1. Okay. Well, it says, Serge Valentine scored the old point. 17 higher than 21 recently, and the 17 is a fun option for those who can't get the 21. I have had the 17. Uh, my gracious friend, Everwind, uh, thank you again for uh, letting me have a sample of that. The uh, 17 was fantastic. I, I, I did not get into the 12 very much. It was kind of a, you know, run-of-the-mill mediocre thing to me. But I, I think the only reason is because I've had over 150 different types of, of scotch already. So I'm kind of just going through samples like crazy and, and just uh, – experiencing a lot of different and I love stronger flavors. So I think the either the heavier cast stuff or the older stuff is going to be more my thing because, because the, the stronger flavor and more complex flavor is there, but uh, complex doesn't always mean great. I've noticed with uh, when you get into the herbal floral 
some of the combinations are just a little bit over kill. Sometimes it gets soapy or minerally or, you know, uh, overly savory, that kind of stuff. Like, you know, so it's not always about the, um, I should say the complexity. It's, it's a, to me, it's about good flavor being strong, you know, and the uh, old, old Pultney 17, I think it does have that. Everyone says, uh, Toro, he says, I agree with 17 to one for dram best price point. Yeah. I was lucky enough to find that. Uh, and I still have it. Uh, Chris, uh, everyone, if you're interested in another bottle at some point, they still have it there. And I believe it is, this is not a, this is a, as of, uh, I think February, unfortunately, I need to get him to run me a March uh, list. Um, but let's look here. Old Pulteney, 17. He's got for 122.99. So his uh, 21 is 189.99. And what kills me is they have a bottle up there of the 1989 Old Pulteney Special Edition deal. But they went like 275 for it. And I think that's a bit high. I talked to my friend Hoagy Bear from Germany. He's familiar with the bottle, and he thought that was a little on the high end for it. So I'm kind of keeping my distance from that bottle, even though it <laughs> sounds really damn intriguing because it's rare and it's good, and I'll probably never see it again. But, you know, it's not always what it's about either. So, yeah, Old Pulteney 12 is only 40%. I think that's what it is. I think you're right, Welsh. If it was 46 um, or 48 even, but, I mean, you never see a 12-year-old probably that high. But, um, well, I'll take that back. Sometimes you do. Can't remember what the Glendronic 12 is, but um, it's got to be 46, I would think, at least. But yeah, 46 uh, and above are pretty much the, you know, it's going to be a lot better. The 40s just don't cut it for me usually. I think that's why I never got into the Glenmore G10. Um, and even though I guess it's, you know, decent light juice, it's just the, without the higher ABV, it's hard to get that kick, you know, that. That, that flavor combination isn't as, as strong or intriguing without it. Speaking of, this is still great. Oh, my. The fruits just never, I mean, this is a dram that just never dies with time or water or air or anything. It's just just great for an all-nighter. <laughs> But you do have to pace yourself with it. We're going to keep that for later. It's good. I would like to uh, go ahead and do the next one. So we're going to do a little cleanse. And uh, have a little fun with the old peat monster cast strength. That should be interesting. Finish one is still, is still great. Uh, the 58, uh, it's more fruit heavy. So just from my own personal notes and what Louise shared with me, 57 clove cigarettes, 58 fruit heavy. And his 59, it sounded like it was chocolate heavy. So it's good to know, you know. You never know when you, when you run into a, a bottle. and Because the batch variations are so different nowadays. Like Tam do batch two, I've heard. You know, sometimes the batch two, I've heard is great. Sometimes I've heard people aren't really into it. And they're all batch two. It's hard to tell, you know, which one are you going to get. I mean, I'm not sure what it is. But I guess it's just, you know, so many different variations with the one that's made. And temperature and all that. Sorry about that, guys. Um, Triple Cap says the, the U.S. version of the Glendronic 12 is 43%. And um, that's surprising, actually. I wonder what mine is. I'll have to look it up later. It's probably 43 because I did get it in America, but this tastes stronger than that. It's probably the, I think they use PX um, casks in the uh, 12 even. So I think it's probably what's helping out the flavor. If it's not the ABV, it's got to be the PX cask, I'm pretty sure. Um, Louis says his full Pulteney 12 is 43. Huh. Yeah, I'm not sure if because there are usually if they in America when they sell Scotch whiskey they sell a little bit higher ABV than they do in Europe. And that goes for Laphroaig and all sorts of different um, distilleries. So it's very possible that the 43 is here in the 40s over in the UK or in Canada. Even I'm not quite sure though. Don't quote me on it, but I bet that's what's going on. 
let's uh, pour this one while we're talking. And uh, thanks again, Lee, if you're still around for the um, this awesome, awesome chance at that sampling this. I'm still catching up with my distiller.com reviews. I just hit 150. Uh, can, I'll congratulate myself. <laughs> and uh, But I still have like five or six to do to catch up. And I will do that here this weekend. We'll start a little. I will pour a little more. What the hell? <laughs> I definitely want to keep a lot, but I want to have a big port too. I want everything. <laughs> oh my. No angels getting their share in that bottle. But it didn't tighten so much that I break the cap. That happens sometimes too. All right. We'll let this air out. Oh my goodness. Oh, it smells like heaven right away. <laughs> as soon as I put my nose even close, drive by sniff. Oh my no! I did a glance. Let me look at the a couple notes here while we're letting it sit. As the cask strength version of Peat Monster, it's a, it's a rare bottle actually, uh, more rare than I thought. It's uh, two thousand bottles. That's it. That's surprising. That's not very many. Uh, One point five liters they sold them, and they're big bottles. Um, and there's a tenth anniversary one as well i think i'm not sure if there's a different version of the cast strength if there's like a 10th anniversary one and a regular one but uh i'm just kind of glancing but Kalila and kleinly sure are big players with the blends here they don't really go into detail i think uh much on what they're really really using but it's hard to go wrong with the, the Kalila and the kleinly because they're both outstanding and i can imagine if you blended like I would say 60 to 70 percent Klein Leash, 30 percent Kalila. I'm sure they have a couple um, hidden gems. They like to use Dolly Lane, uh, Tanish, in, uh, or Tanich, I should say. And um, they use um, Ardbeg on occasion. They like to play around with their blends a lot. Uh, and sometimes they use up to six or seven different ones. And one will be 70 percent, one will be 0.5 percent, one will be like, under 0.1%. It's crazy. They, they have a, a very precise way of doing it, but um, that's why I think a lot of these work out really well. Uh, so far for Compass Box, I have not been a huge, uh, have experienced very much other than uh, the double single we uh, and I uh, shared. That was great, um, but not as good as the No Name. The No Name was one of the best whiskeys I've ever had. Uh, the double single, I don't want to say it was a disappointing, just comparatively, like if you take the no name and then you drink the double single, it's not in the same caliber. I'm hoping that this guy can at least hang with the no name more than the double single. I think that's what we're going to get with this. Uh, I hate to ask you the price point on this, Lee. If you don't mind sharing, let me know in the, in the chat what you uh, had to, to, to pay. And keep in mind, this is a 1.75 liter bottle. This is huge. This is massive. So... It's not your typical 750 milliliters, but I'm sure it's not a cheap bottle because there's only 2,000 of them. It's got to be pretty crazy. Uh, Richie's asking if there's any cleanliness older than 14. Um, let me take a quick look. Uh, I'm sure there's lots of independent bottlings that will have um, older than that, but as far as... Uh, from what I'm seeing for just the distillery, they have a 14, they have a distiller's edition, which I'd love to try. That would be outstanding. Um, same comparative price, it looks like. Um, they have a special, like a select reserve from 2015. Let me see if it says what the age of it is. It's 112.2 proof and 2,946 bottles were uh, limited worldwide. Wow. It's an NAS, unfortunately, so it doesn't really tell us what the age is. But I'd still love to try it. <laughs> oh, my. Um, that's about it on Klein Leash. It's, it's literally mostly used for brand, uh, blends. Johnny Walker being a huge one and Compass Box being another one that uses a lot of it. So I think 14 Distillers Edition, those two, Select Reserve, throw it in there for an oddity. Those are pretty much the three distillery bottles you could probably find 2015 being extremely difficult i'm sure distillers edition i've never seen it i'm sure it exists the 14 you can find all day long so hopefully that answers your question pretty well there 
Um, but yeah, I mean, if you're looking for, um, you know, they have a 20 year cat strength collection, uh, a signatory release. If you're, if you're don't care about the independent bottling versions, they do have lots of older ones for that. And I've seen, uh, some older ones at my favorite store here in Maryland. It's got, uh, some cool, uh, Klein leash. I think from exclusive malts has one that was like, uh, 21 or 24 years old. Very, very nicely done. I'm sure, uh, can't afford that, but, uh, maybe someday <laughs> I'll have to look again. Oh, it was a, 1.75. Yeah, I thought I said 1.75. Sorry if I if I said 1.5. 1.75 liter. Yes, it's um, it's uh, it's it's the biggest bottle I've ever seen. Uh, it was 155. Oh, a couple of years ago. That's not that bad for that size bottle. Jeez, man, that's a hell of a deal. You could probably, I'm sure you probably opened them, but if you had one that was unopened, you probably could sell it for like four or $500 right now today. I don't know what the secondary market is doing right now, but I'm, I'm sure it's, it's gotta be pretty far up there, but I'll have to uh, look around and see if I can find it. Just, uh, I don't know. It's hard to get into the blends. Uh, as I'm trying to, once you spread out and do like independent bottlings and then you spread out and do um, blends, it's like you're, it's hard to focus. I, I think I might even just focus on Isla and Campbelltown pretty much uh, mostly. Uh, occasionally dive into like the highlands I like, like Glen Orangey or the sky, uh, all of sky, like the islands at, at Talisker. Um, but uh, Abelar is good. Uh, the 18 is good. Not as good, I don't think, as the Abenon, but uh, the Abelar 18 is not a bad dram. Um, I think for the price, though, I'd probably rather get the Avenant, even though it's a, uh, an NAS, believe it or not. It's just the way it's blend, I blended it is the word for it. The way it's done is just excellent. Let's get to the uh, the Peat Monster Cast Strength, man. It's funny. You definitely, definitely, first, first note is smoked bacon. And I know the Kalila is is really helping out the smoke factor here. But there's also, I want to say, a little bit of art bag in there, too. I don't know if they use it. I didn't see it on the notes that I was looking at. But uh, I wouldn't be surprised if there was not only Kalila, but also art bag in this blend. It, it's if, if it is, it's probably like 10% or lower just to give it that that smoky bacony barbecue nuance but it's definitely there and you can't really get that just with the kalila you do get a heavy smoke but that that nice sweet meaty goodness is from an art bag pretty much oh it's all over that the only uh, way i can see this not having art bag is if with the kalila and the klein leash combined that's the klein leash is giving it the the factors the uh, properties that i'm talking about I also get some real bright floral notes in there too as well. Hmm. I'm trying to pick out the flower. It's not a lilac, thankfully, not soapy. Like lavender, maybe. Oh, that's good. See if I get any fruit. I think I get a subtle, thankfully it's subtle because I don't like a real strong lemon flavor, but I get a little really like a a low, like a distant lemon. Don't get any lime, thankfully. Get more of an orange with a lemon together. I'm trying to think of what that would make if you had lemons and oranges together. <laughs> Not a fruit punch, but like a light citrus uh Combination of like orange, mango, lemon, I think, together. Wow. It's, it's a nice nose. I have to give it credit. And uh, it starts out really strong, of course, and then the more you're nosing it, the less intense it really gets. I'm, I'm sh you know, I'm sure the, the air is, is helping that process too, but I think you just get used to it after a bit. 
trying to see if I'm getting anything else with it. This is uh, 60, what was this? 60, oh, 57.3. I could take a couple of drops. So I want to take a little sit and eat first, and then we'll do some drops. Let's see what we get with uh, get some uh, viscosity going on here. Let's see what we can see. It's a little runny, but not, 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 uh, not crazy thin, I don't think. I would hope not for this kind of whiskey. If this is thin, I'll be really surprised, but you never know. Uh, legs are not very well defined. They're kind of just runny, thin legs. We'll see what happens. Nice mouth coats, medium. Good taste. A little hot, of course, 57.3, but... Wow, it's a nice combination of fruit and meaty, savory, bacony goodness with the smoke. I like that. I've never had the regular peat monster though, so it's hard for me to compare what you know. What is this compared to that directly? I know some people um, gave the uh, regular peat monster actually a maybe a little bit of a higher rating i'm surprised because this is really good and i like a really heavy uh you know strength we'll put a couple of drops in there just let it uh let it uh do its thing a little bit catch up on some comments let's see here oh wow i missed a lot <laughs> triple says uh, the great King Street is an awesome blended whiskey. Is that's also a compass box, I think, correct? If, that was, correct me if I'm not if I'm mistaken, but I think that's also a part of compass box or some sort of uh, offering that they do. I'm not. I, 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 it's familiar. I've seen it somewhere, and I thought it was the same type of deal. Uh, Lee says 50, 155 when he bought it a couple of years ago. Okay. Lee says I've seen it cheaper recently, but not. It's not re readily available online around 135, huh? That's a good price though, man. For for this for this whiskey, it's definitely worth 135, especially for the size, the 1.75 liter. I mean, my God, that's like a two liter of soda. <laughs> I mean, that's like ah, I could I could see myself double fisting that for a little bit. <laughs> wow, Brent asks can anyone find the belvini 15 single barrel i just saw that <laughs> i just saw that the other day in virginia at um vienna virginia abc store had a uh, belvini 15 single barrel i'm pretty sure because i remember they were showing me different things and i was looking around and i saw a bunch of belvinis and i think one of them was the 15 single barrel i'm pretty sure Oh my! If it wasn't there, it was definitely the one in Maryland that I go to. I've seen, I've seen it. Oh, everyone just says he saw it in DC too. So there you go. I think we probably both saw it. Uh, yeah, some things are really easy to find here. Surprisingly, that might be one of those bottles. I, I do see Balvenie all over the place in DC. I don't. Th I think it's kind of like Old Pulteney. I don't think it sells as much here for some reason. Um, not that crazy on that one. Hmm. Everyone loves it. I, I have never tried that one. I've had the 14, but everyone says the Avalar 16 sucks. I haven't tried the 16. The 18's decent. I like this one I'm not a lot better, but I've never tried the 16 uh, for the price. You'd hope it wouldn't suck, but I've never been so disappointed, disappointed in scotch. I don't even want to drink it. Wow. Number R sixteen was that bad, man. That's that's kind of scary. I'll I'll have to I'll have to wait and so hope I can get it out of the expo and just taste it and see what it's like. I'm not doubting you. I'm just, it's funny because some drams are like that. I've heard of like a, a Talisker twenty five is ho like horrible. I, I can't imagine that because the eighteen is is really good. The ten is outstanding, but maybe the older it gets, the worse it gets. But I heard the thirty is great, but I don't know. Uh, certain certain ages are just kind of weird. I think with certain uh, distilleries. Well, it says, uh, yes, I can get the 15 sherry. That's a lovely dram. I still have some of the discontinued 15 experiment. Hmm. 
Louis says he's yet to try a Belvedere. What's a good starting point? Double cast or just get a single barrel? I would not do the double cast, uh, the, the 12, uh, the double wood, I think is what they call it. The 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 Belvedere 12, to me, the double wood was just kind of a letdown. Didn't like it. The Caribbean cast 14 is great. You got to like a sweet dram, though, to get into it. It's got tropical flavors out the yin If you like tropical flavors, Go for the, the Balvenie 14 Caribbean cask. If you like peat, go for the Balvenie Peat Week 14. That's also really good. Um, I never had the Portwood 21. I heard it was excellent. It's very pricey, though, so I would stick closer to the Caribbean cask 14, which I think is around $60 to $70. I uh, cannot remember what the Peat Week 14 is, but I think it would be comparable. Maybe about 10 to 20 more, but... It just depends if you like the sweet versus the peep. Those are the two that I would I would definitely shoot for before anything else. Uh, the 12 is just really kind of a mediocre, not much taste going on for me, but I like heavy, you know, taste. So let's go back to, uh, let's see. Triple Cat says thanks and all. Till next time. All right. Well, cheers, my friend. Hope I see you next show. Uh, Lisa's uh, level R16 is a pointless bottle. Wow, 12 is decent, but weak and 18 is smooth. Yeah, 18 I like. 16 didn't fill the gap. Huh. Yeah, maybe that's why it's um, it's interesting. I guess the, it's so middle of the road that people just don't really get into it because the 12 at least has the youth that gives you that punch sometimes. And of course, the 18 and the other ones are going to give you more complex flavor. So 16 is kind of a, unless you're Lagavulin, I guess it's, it's hard to. Uh, go there um the boy is very nice entry scotch but there are minor batch variations so everyone yeah um yeah i mean if it's your first like if you if you, if you haven't tried very much scotch then i think it's like an entry level but for flavor man it, I, it's almost like you're drinking a bourbon to me but that's just me um well let's just get the 12 year single barrel yeah i bet that's good Lisa's his favorite was the Caribbean Cast 14 as well. Nice room and coconut notes. Yeah, I'm with Lee on that one. Um, 16 is only 40%. ABV2, what a joke. Wow. Everyone says. It's got the Caribbean Cast and likes the room a lot, but that one just does not do it for me. Huh. Yeah, it's uh, it's all subjective with this hobby. That's the tough thing. I mean, if you, if you look at a review, you know, a site that does like, cumulative reviews like Metacritic and it gets in the higher 80s to 90s, it, you're probably going to end up liking it. I would be surprised if you didn't. If it's at least like 85 to 100, you know, closer to the 90s to 100, it, it, you know, it's hard to go wrong with, with one of those, but you never know. I've had some floral herbal nightmares that were just not for me. And some even PD, like some I like peat, but some of these peaty, like lemony, real heavy lemon lime ones. Oh, Enoch Flutter, for example, I did not like that much. It was okay. It's it was it was tough. Um, and the Glenlivet peat, uh, what was that? The Dura peated cask. Oh, horrible as far as like just overly punchy lemon lime notes. I, I didn't give it a horrible score because I, I mean, for what they're doing, it I think if you like that flavor, that lemon tart lemon curd kind of flavor but uh, not for me richie says he's yet to try the whole Coloma. what's the best one by first can't find the quarter cask anywhere richie do you uh, like pete do you like sherry or do you like um what's your favorite um note uh i know that people were saying a lot gorm but that's only if you like the peat if you're not a peat head you're not going to like the lot gorm as much as you would the sinaig i love the sinaig it's got a good mix of peat and cherry it's it's a nice like a uh, hybrid i'm a big fan of hybrids i like my peat i like my sherry but i love my peat with my sherry at the same time that's my favorite kind of drams um the kill coleman cast strength is an excellent model um i have had that one it's like peanut brittle Oh, it's it's beautiful. Uh, I had it at a bar actually for the first time, of all places, and really enjoyed it. It was at a really good Scotch bar, though. Um, Lisa's have heard that you need to drink a 2016 batch two 
the 2014 batch one was a mess. I haven't had that one. This was definitely a 2016 batch two or later version of the cast strength. I know that because this was a little more recent. I'm pretty sure I'll have to see if I can find out which bottle she's got. Um, the Machir Bay uh, is a good one. But um, I, I did not get into the 100% Isla. I know some people love that. But that's just not for me. But the Sinead, that's the... Uh, the purple bottle, the lot Gorn is the black, but my personal favorite of all the Kilhomas I've ever had is the red wine cast mature. That one is badass. Uh, Lee, I don't think you've even popped your sample open yet. Are you holding on the um, Kilhoma and red wine cast matured for a bit? Or I can't remember if you popped that open or not, or what you thought of that. Cause I have a feeling that you're going to absolutely love that one, man. Uh, it's got great flavor. It's got great, a great cask with a great amount of peat. Fantastic. Um, I believe 10 is a pretty tasty and expensive daily dram, huh? The 10, I don't know if it's readily available over here. I haven't think I've seen it 10 before. Maybe I'll take a look. I know I've seen the 12 and the 16 and the 18 in Ebenau, but I'm not sure about the 10. Uh, Richie says he likes both, but he's a sherry head. Richie, I, the lot Gorm, if, if you're more of a sherry head than just a peat head, the Lot Gorm is great. Don't get me wrong. If you love really heavy smoke, like an Ardbe kind of smoke, it's 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 fantastic, and I love it. But also try the Seneg in this red wine cast matured, man. Um, I would shoot for the red the red wine cast matured. That's my favorite. Uh, Lee hasn't opened his <laughs> opened that one yet. Oh, you're in for a treat, my friend. You're gonna be like, why did I open this first? <laughs> I guarantee it. Everyone says, uh, Lee, uh, let me know how that goes, because uh, I'm a Belvini fan. I agree that 17 is overpriced for what you got. Uh, curious about the Portwood. Yeah, I'd like to see what the Portwood is about. I um, can't remember if I – I don't think I've been to a place where – I think they'll be at this uh, this Whiskey Expo in April, possibly. Might be able to get a try it there, maybe. We'll have to see. Welsh says, look, Gorm is peated, but Asian is sherry cast, lovely stuff. Yeah, yeah, it, it, I know what you're saying. It's just, uh, to me, it's more on the peat, smoky end than the sherry end. The snake, to me, is more on the sherry end versus the peat end. And the red wine cask is a great mix of the sherry, well, red wine cask and the, and the peat together. I mean, I don't know. I've never had a bad kill helmet. I'm not real down with the uh, with the 100% Isla, but every other one I've ever had it was fantastic. So I don't think you can really go wrong with whatever you pick. To be honest with you, um, he says uh, the crew, everyone the 21 port was on the tasting list for the whiskey face next month. Should be great. Yeah, you know, we were gonna have to uh, take a look at that and a little more focus and see. I haven't got hooked on the balcony yet. Uh, in the 14 peak week in the color being cast, but um, I'm sure like the McAllen black we're cast black. Once I have the high end stuff, it's going to be no turning back. Oh, it's beautiful. Smoke's still there. Floral notes are still there. They're bright floral. It's not like it's definitely one of the lighter fruits, but some strawberries, raspberries in there too. Some really good pulled pork barbecue. Mm. I'm trying to see if I get any chocolate or anything like that in there, but not yet. Mm. Ooh, our big announced their seminar for Whiskey Fest, lots of committee related editions. The Kelpie Dark Coven Grooves, nice. This uh, our big Grooves man is 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 really really nice. It's um, it was a, a, a very well done deal, and I was scared. I was like, man, I'm gonna end up going all the way to Vienna and going through all this to get this bottle. I'm gonna get it home, and I'm gonna be disappointed, and I'm gonna be mad, but not so great fruit i mean if you like fruit like i wouldn't go as far as tropical not 
too far like that way, but medium tropical, but more just like heavy, good mango, peach, nectarine, tangerine, rena reen, everything with that real good heavy peach smoke. That's what this is like. And it's I think you'll like the grooves, man. I I, I like it. Um, still a bigger fan of the Dark Cove is my favorite whiskey of our all time. The committee released with the Dark Cove. Um, it's hard to beat that one because it's like a black forest cake with a uh, filet mignon together in one sitting. <laughs> I can't, there's nothing else I can compare that to. I mean, it's like having the best meal of your life in one golden glass. Um, I like steak Diane. Oh, it's, it's fantastic. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm down for it. And Kelpie is, is great too. I, I love, I love all their stuff. I, um, Cannot wait to, to dive into Ardbeg, that's for sure. Anything I get my hands on, especially the some of the years that I know they're out there, the 21s and the 23s and the 20-somethings. And, and then one day, my dream jam is to try the Eri Nambesht, the uh, 1990 um, special thing. I, I was that close to bidding on a, an auction one time. It was just so much money. I think it went like some crazy amount of pounds for it. I was just like, nah. But uh, someday, that and Lord of the Isles, I would love to try Lord of the Isles. But that sucker is like 750. <laughs> it's crazy money. But um, we'll see how that goes. But that that's going to be my uh, a dream, a, a dream dream for, for real. Aaron Nambesh is going to be, if I ever get my hands on it, the Galileo, the Supernova, any of those older Serendipity, Blasta. Uh, mm. There is some dark chocolate in the finish of this. It's got a slight savory finish uh, with a little sweetness that makes it have that dark chocolate deal. It's a little dry, but not overly dry. It, it's got a nice linger to it. I didn't pour a whole lot, and I put a little bit of water on it, and it's pretty perfect out of the gate, man. 1.75 liter bottle of that would be pretty damn awesome to me. For 150, that's badass, I have to say. It's a shame they only made 2,000 bottles of that. I, I, I cannot believe it. How much is that numbished worth to you? I can bring a bottle if the price is right. You got a bottle of that, you bastard. <laughs> you didn't tell me? Oh, man. <laughs> man, I wish I had some, like, bottle of just something that you've been looking for for, like, 10 years, like, back there, and I could just be like, pow, this is what I'll trade you a sip of. But unfortunately, I'm so new to the hobby that I don't have anything like that quite yet. But uh, I'll get there eventually. Um, but uh, it's it's worth a lot, but I don't have what it's worth to give you, <laughs> basically, is what that's about. So one day, that's that's a, that's, a, that's, like, that's like a dream bucket. That's like a unicorn bottle to me. That's... It's sad because Jack Rose in DC has that, I think, uh, as a, a pour. I'm not sure what they charge for it. Probably like some crazy $100, $120 for a little a little pour like this. <laughs> I'd probably charge you $120 for a pour like that. But, um, you know, wow. <laughs> mm. Fantastic, guys. Well, I think we better cut her off. It's uh, it's getting back close to twelve, and um, gotta do some uh, telework tomorrow, so it can't get too crazy. The wheels came off a little while ago, but two great drams. I mean, this is like whiskey heaven here. But you got if your sherry bomb, Abelar Abana. It's it's fantastic. Watch your batch numbers; they do make a big difference. I'm telling you. Um, and cheers again, Lee. I can't wait to get you on the uh, interwebs here. We're going to have a, a hell of a fantastic live situation time at uh, the Whiskey Expo. We're going to do a couple of shows. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. Um, I'm bringing a couple of really good bottles. I already got them packed up in my little carrier ready to go. And um, I think it's going to be fun. And 
this has been outstanding and I'm glad I was able to save a, a pretty good amount of it for future use. So Richie, uh, I'll, I'll go back here before we cut her off. Well, says the Arbic 21 and had a pretty crummy review from liquor hound. He thought it was way overpriced. It was originally made to go into blends. So probably aged in well used refill casks. the 21. Yeah. That's a tough one, man. And when you're talking our big, uh, it's hard to, for me to, to, I mean, I'm not a huge 10 fan, but anything else they've ever done out of that distillery, I've been like, Mickey, <laughs> you are the man. Um, but that stuff has been around way before maybe he even got there. I think he took over when they brought it out of the ashes from the 80s to the 90s, but I can't remember. Uh, for 21, that had been like uh, late, you know, late 90s juice so Richie Z are you part of the next whiskey tube or round table you belong in there oh I appreciate it my friend uh, I do not know uh, I don't know if they're doing a round table uh, again soon if they are I, I have not been made aware of it um, I have heard that the scotch for dummies are going to get with uh, I think whiskey in the six Rob in Ontario uh, for a show of some sort coming up. I haven't been invited uh, other than Malta in Montreal has been gracious enough, uh, you know, to say we should hook up and do something. We haven't sat down and, and got any time uh, stated or anything. And no one else is like, you know, has said, Hey, come on for the show. So I'm just waiting to see some sort of invite maybe uh, and then go from there. I'm still, you know, working my way up. So I don't mind doing my, uh, get my nose dirty first before, you know, I'm getting the invites and stuff, but, uh, you know, it'll happen. I think it's, uh, it's fun either way. I, if I just do it with you guys here, I don't really need anything else, but if people are wanting to do something together, I'm all for it too. It's fun. And the more, the more people, the more fun it is. That's, that's, that's true. I appreciate the, the shout out. Please spread the word, you know, Richie, if you, uh, are a subscriber to Rob or uh, Sky and Bard or um, anybody of those guys. Uh, yeah. Say, Hey, tell us, you know, it's got a good show going on. I enjoy it and spread the word a little bit. I appreciate it. Lisa says, I hope we aren't doing a post festival show. I don't expect people to sit up right. <laughs> yeah. We're going to, I'm going to have to get you guys. Uh, I think what we'll do is we'll have a dream or two first. And then I'll talk to you guys about, hey, maybe you, maybe we should do a little live show here for, you know, could be short, 20 minutes. Do one and see how it goes. And if you guys have fun with it, then maybe, you know, before the wheels come off, do do another one. And, and I mean, we got plenty of bottles to, uh, to uh, have just a, a huge show. I mean, it's going to be a, a huge one. It's going to be awesome. I think we'll get a lot of viewers and a lot of uh, people, if we do the right, uh, get the word out that we're going to be at the expo live and, and we're going to be bringing all these bottles with us to enjoy in the hotel and stuff. It's going to be badass, I think. Um, but we'll do it before. Yeah. We won't do it post festival. That's for sure. As I'm going to be probably in the same boat you're going to be in. Hey Sam, thanks for stopping by. You're, you're a little late to the party, but I'm glad you caught the tail end of the show. Uh, Santa says, sorry, I didn't get in the chat much on the other side of the room and wrecked my back during the moving furniture. Don't worry about it, Santa. I'm glad you're just here in the chat and, uh, and, and just viewing it and put some comments in later. Comments are always good after the fact too. He says the 21 is pissed the disappointing flavor wise, the history and story behind it makes it iconic, but it doesn't, isn't worth the $600 price tags. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a tough one, man. I mean, yeah, the the prices is what kills me. It's like, if it, if it was more like three hundred, it would be obtainable. But when you get over five hundred dollars for, I don't care if it's freaking twenty one or fifty one, it's like, damn, you know, that's just crazy money. Well, it's just uh, four hundred plus pounds for an okay whiskey. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a question mark that should be looked at, and hopefully, if the you know if they they probably just don't have a lot of it to sell. That's the problem. So they can charge that much. And fanboys like me that want to just try it, even if we're not going to be happy, we're almost, if we have that kind of money, we're almost willing to throw down and, and, and get it. But thankfully I don't have it, so I can't throw down to get it. But uh, 
hopefully I'll get a chance to taste it at a t tasting or, or something. I'm, I'm hoping somebody's got to have some somewhere that I could trade for it or something. So we'll see. Richie says, we'll do that. Appreciate it, man. Louis says, great interaction here. I enjoyed my time here. Keep it up. Thanks, Louis. Uh, if it's, is it Louise or Louis? I'm, I don't want to mispronounce your name. I think it's Louise. Uh, and uh, you're, you're more than welcome anytime. I usually do Thursdays at 11 o'clock. Uh, the Scotch for Dummies are going to be doing a, a weird show on Wednesday next week. I might get their 10 o'clock uh, uh, time slot. i got to talk to Mike, though, because it sounds like he might be doing a show. i got to check in with those guys and see if I can just take their 10 uh, p.m. time. Or uh, I could just do a Tuesday show. Sometimes I just like to do it as part of the moment Tuesday show. So, um, Got to run. Fair winds, uh, everyone. Thanks for stopping by, as always. I'll see you in D.C. hopefully soon. And uh, Louise, the second one, gotcha. Um, Lisa's is bringing the 23 and the Black Arts 5.1 is to build a baiting on something else. Should be great stuff getting passed around the room. Yeah, that's going to be excellent. You can't go wrong with the Black Arts 5.1. I did have that at the expo uh, in Indianapolis, and it's very good. I actually did like it better than the four, which surprised me. It's got that funky note, that mushroomy note in the four. It's still there in the five, but not as profound, but I still enjoyed it. Good night, Welsh, and uh, cheers, uh, Richie, and thanks so much for stopping by, guys. It's been awesome as always, and uh, go Kentucky. I didn't get to see the I'm, I'm afraid to look at the, the, the score. Uh, hopefully, if I um, didn't miss the whole game, I probably did, though. Oh, it's not there. Oh, let's see if I refresh it, if it'll give me the score. Oh, it's 61 to 58 with seven seconds left. Oh, my gosh. UK is going to lose this game unless they've got some sort of miracle three pointer in the end. That is crazy. Oh, sad. Santa Cruz says, uh, doesn't everybody here, when they buy their first $100 whiskey, only that's a lot of money. And we know commonly talk about $300 bottles. It's true. It, yeah, the first time I, I, I got a smoky grouse, it was horrible. It was, it was, I, the first sip was good. I, I was like, this, you know, I can, I can see myself drinking this. But by the second day, it was oxidized. It was coinly sweet. It was, I couldn't drink it. And then I got an Arbeg Ugadol. Never looked back after that. I, I, I just cannot drink the the real slash low blend stuff anymore and, and, and really enjoy it as much. Because once you've got something like an Ugadol or um, a Bunnahaven 12, 18 especially, um, the Kalila 12, I do have my, one of my next shows is going to be an unpeated 17 Kalila. I'm going to get that puppy out. That's going to be fun. Haven't had any unpeated Kalilas. So that's going to be an interesting find. Uh, find. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, it's hard to turn back once you go that route. Well, thanks a lot, guys, for stopping by. I'm going to go ahead and shut her down. It's been uh, a while. and uh, But I always have fun. And uh, hopefully, uh, like, subscribe. Tell your friends, uh, especially if they like a good scotch, and uh, go Big Blue. It's kind of sad they're probably going to lose to the Kansas State Wildcats. Want to be Wildcats of all people. Oh, well. Slanchava.